We have the next question from a non-Muslim sister from this mic. Assalamu alaikum Dr. Ismail. Uh, actually, um, my non-Muslim friend, I am asking this question on behalf of her. Uh, she attended your Universal Brotherhood Conference and she really respects you. Uh, she believes in one God, but she is uh, born in a Hindu family. So she thinks that uh, whom she calls Brahma is what we call Khalik. So as long as he is following her religion, uh, she should get salvation. Then how can we convince her that the only accepted religion to God is Islam? Thank you. Sister, I suppose the question of one of our Hindu friends had come from my talk in Shah Alam, Universal Brotherhood. And she liked the lecture, but she says that who she considers Brahma as God is same as Khalik, so can she go to Jannah? If you read the Hindu scriptures, if you read Rig Ved, book number 2, hymn number 1, verse number 3, one of the attributes given to God is Brahma. Brahma is called as the creator God. We Muslims have got no objection if someone says, Almighty God is creator. If you translate creator into Arabic, it becomes Khalik. So we Muslims have got no objection if someone says Almighty God is creator or Khalik or Brahma. But if someone says Brahma is Almighty God who has got four heads and on each head is a crown, we Muslims take strong objection to it because you are going against Sveta Sita Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19, which says, Na se Pratima Asti, of that God there is no Pratima. Pratima in Sanskrit means an image, a photograph, a painting, a picture, a portrait, a sculpture, a statue, an idol. So, the Hindu scriptures as well as the Vedas, Rajurvay chapter 32 verse number 3 says, Na se Pratima Asti, of that God there is no image, there is no photograph, there is no painting, there is no picture, there is no sculpture, there is no idol. So the moment you give an image to God, that means it is not the true God. And in the Hindu scriptures, I had given the talk in Jawabaru, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the world religious scriptures. In the Hindu scriptures, it prophesizes the coming of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you read Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhyay 3, Shokas 5 to 8, it talks about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you read Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 10 to 27, it talks about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you read Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 1, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 21 to 23, it talks about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you read the Kuntap Suktas, Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 127, verse number 1 to 14, it talks about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I can give references from Hindu scriptures. Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 21 and verse number 6. Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 21 and verse number 7. It talks about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is called as the one who praises Ahmad in several places. In Yajurve chapter 31, verse number 18. In Rig Ved, book number 8, hymn number 6, verse number 10. In Atharva Ved, book number 8, hymn number 5, verse number 16. In Atharva Ved, Book number 20, hymn number 126, verse number 14. He is called as Nara Shansa. Nar means man, Shansa means praises, one who praises. If you translate Nara Shansa into Arabic, it becomes Muhammad. He is named as Muhammad Nara Shansa in several places in Hindu scriptures. In Rigved, book number 1, hymn number 13, verse number 3. In Rigved, book number 1, hymn number 18, verse number 9. In Rigved, book number 1. Hymn number 106, verse number 4. Rig Ved, book number 1. Hymn number 142, verse number 3. Rig Ved, book number 2. Hymn number 3, verse number 2. Rig Ved, book number 5. Hymn number 5, verse number 2. Rig Ved, book number 7. Hymn number 2, verse number 2. Rig Ved, book number 10. Hymn number 100, verse number 3. Yajur Ved, chapter number 20, verse number 37. Yajur Ved, chapter number 20, verse 57. Yajur Ved, chapter number 21, verse number 31. Yajur Ved, chapter number 28, verse number 2. Yajur Ved, chapter number 28, verse number 19. Yajur Ved, chapter number 28, verse number 42. I can go on and giving references only of Hindu scriptures about the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. He is even prophesied as Kalki Avatar. If you read Kalki Purana, chapter number 2, verse number 5, 7, 11, 15, it says that the last and final messenger, his father's name shall be Vishnu Yas, that is servant of God, Abdullah, which was the name of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi father. His mother's name will be Sumati, which means peace, serenity, in Arabic Amina, which was the name of the mother of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi He will be born in the village of Sambala, that is the village of peace and serenity, Makkah. He will be born in the family of the chief of village of Sambala. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born in the family of Quraysh. It says he will be born on 12th day of Mahadav, 12th Rabbi Awal. He will have four friends. 
the first book Khulfa Rashidin. There are so many prophecies. So if she's a good Hindu, she should believe in one God who has got no idol and no image. He should believe in the last and final messenger, the Kalki Autar Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hope that answers the question. Thank you. I'm just wondering, um, why does it happen that man can marry a few women? Well, it doesn't work on women. Um, why is it considered to be immoral or not appropriate for women to marry a few men? Thank you.